Hallelujah. Welcome to this segment. We're still talking about principles for success. I've shared with you on vision. I want to talk about planning right now. And please listen to these few words. They will inspire you so much. And I pray that this word of the kingdom come to you with full force and cause you to receive such empowerment and such desire to begin to pursue the next adventure of your life. Oftentimes, when we don't understand the mindset of God uh, regarding his kingdom and the way things operate, we do things based on opinions from people. Planning is powerful. Planning simply means series of activities that must be accomplished in order to fulfill a goal or in order to arrive at a vision. Planning simply means what I'm about to do next to get to my destination. A plan simply means a drawn down, a written down, all right, a carved out series of activities. So time is involved in planning. Hallelujah. You need to understand this. Why am I saying so? Let's talk about success for a minute. It is possible to be successfully wrong. Why? The Bible talks about good success. Meditate on this word day and night. Be careful to do about all that is written in it. Then if you do so, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Look at Joshua chapter 1. You will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. Take from verse 8 forward. So you will get the word. Be careful to do what is written in it. Then as you meditate and you are careful to perform it, what will happen? You will have your way prosperous. You will do it and you will have good success. This is remarkable and inspiring to me. If there is good success, that means it's possible to be successfully wrong. I wonder whether whatever you're doing right now is what God intends for you. And you're so excited about it. You're selling in a bar, uh, or you're operating a nightclub, excuse me, as a child of God. And you call it success. It's possible to be successfully wrong. And God can still permit it. Why? Because power resides in you to do whatever you want on earth. You have a will. And so... Success is also predictable. Amen. By what you're doing, I can tell clearly whether you will succeed or not. It's just like vision. If you claim you have a vision, I must see the kind of books you're reading and the company you're keeping. There must be self-imposed discipline in pursuit of your vision. Praise God. So success is something God intends for you and me. Why? When we succeed, God's reputation is protected. No manufacturer creates a product to fail. When a product fails and there are a lot of complaints from customers, the reputation of that company or that manufacturer is at stake. You and me, we are where we were manufactured by God. And God has never built anything without building in it the success principle, without building in it also the seed principle. So whatever you are called to become, it is in you right now. There is a deposit, the ability within you that can be stirred up through receiving the word of the kingdom exclusively, getting inspiration from it and ministering to the Lord and getting inspiration and visions and direction and guidance using the resources physically available now to pursue it. Success is predictable. That means by whatever you are doing right now, I can tell if you will succeed or not. This is why there's no magic. A student who does not study knows they will fail. A man who is stubborn knows and is into extramarital affairs knows his marriage is at stake. A woman who commits to committing abortions knows very soon they may have conception problems. Anybody who is doing anything that violates the established norms, the laws, the principles that govern success in the kingdom of God, you know there will be consequences. Success is predictable. Also, failure can be predicted. By whatever you are not doing, we can tell you are preparing to fail. Someone has said failure to plan is preparing to fail. That's true. So let's connect now planning with success. I want you and me to quickly look at Psalms 16. There is something interesting in this Psalm 16. I like you and me to look at it. It will bless you because it has a major application on success. God wants you to have good success. Trust me, he wants you to be so successful. When you are successful, the name of the Lord is glorified. Just like when you eat well, grow well, look healthy, and are blessed, God himself is also honored in you. I am a very prosperous, conscious kingdom ambassador. I like nothing to do with poverty because it's not the will of the Father for me. Psalm 16 verse 1 says, Preserve me, O God. Why? For in you I put my trust. But why? O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. Yes, my goodness extended not to thee. 
verse 6, 13 and 6, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is almighty life. Verse 4 says, their souls shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. All right. Ah, their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. Now, so I, I won't continue to read further uh, because it may not have the direct application right there. But let's quickly go to Proverbs 16. Uh, there could have been some reference error right there. Uh, but there's, there's, that verse 1 has an application on what I'm about to say right here. Quickly, let's look at Proverbs 16 because that is what will have the direct interpretation of what I want to mention right now on success. It says, verse 1, The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. You remember Proverbs 14, verse 12, There's a way that seems right to a man, the end of it is destruction. It says, verse 2 of Proverbs 16, All the ways of a man are clean, they are right to him in his own eyes but the lord will weigh the spirits intentions motives direction is this going to help you become what i created you to be verse 3 says commit thy works unto the lord and thy thoughts shall be established oh oh the word thoughts that means plans amen according to god other translations will say simply make a plan all right and present it to the lord he will cause it to prosper Wow, that tells me one thing. God wants me to prosper. Amen. I need a plan. If God must direct anything. That quickly takes me also to Psalms 20. Okay, verse 4 says, The Lord shall cause your thoughts to prosper. The Lord shall cause your plans to succeed. Plans. Keep hearing that word plan, 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 plan. Now, having heard this, that means there is a principal force that must make your vision to come to pass. Secondly, that must make you to be successful. In fact, to be prosperous, to have good success. What is that? It's called plan or planning. That means if there is no plan in place, God is not committed to directing anything. That's a serious one right now. We keep thinking God should just do something about this. He needs a plan in place. God wants to walk without imposing on your will. He wants you to align with his will. Know that, but you must have something you're doing because he cannot run your life for you. That's a serious one. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will prevail. That's Proverbs 19. All right, verse 21. That also now means that before we plan, we must know the will of God, the purpose of God for you and me, for what I'm about to do. Is it about marriage? Is it about planning for economics? Planning about my traveling? Planning about job? What job to get, etc., etc., number of children, and all of that. You need to understand the purpose of God. And it's not difficult because he will show you. So before I plan, I need to know purpose. Why? Because if I plan out of purpose, my life will be stressed out. But that's not a focus right here. If you want the vision God showed you to come to pass, you need a plan because God promises, as already referenced, Psalms 20, verse 4, to cause your plans to succeed. Wow. Now, Proverbs 16, verse 3 says, make a plan, present it to the Lord. He will make it to come to pass. You are not planning. You are alive for the next two, two three months. You don't know what's going to happen. The next one week, you don't know what you should do pay time. I mean, how could God direct you? You see, when people succeed, it is because it is intentional. Success is deliberate. Men choose to succeed. We plan to succeed. It is not a coincidence. You must plan your message. For example, as a minister of God that I am, I study. I have to research. I must see ahead of time. What do I intend to teach? I hear from God. Then I commit those plans to him. He directs the steps pay time. As a medical person, I must see how to organize myself, study about the cases that I must face in the hospital so that I will be efficient and successful. As a lecturer, if I must go to class, I must be organized. Where school, I've researched on the particular subject I must teach or the module for that day and all the questions that can revolve around it so that I will be efficient. My friend, you are supposed to work. Planning is necessary because it disciplines you. Planning causes you to stay on course. Planning, bottom line, and time management is the most effective way to use time properly. Time which, if it is lost, it can be recovered. Many people do not plan. And so because they can't plan, God is not committed to connecting resources to them. What is the use of you receiving your 100 millions right now when you have no plan? Why should I give you 10,000 francs right now when you have no plan? Do you know what you will do when you get that money? Trust me, new things will come up, new desires that have been hidden in you and it's all about spending and squandering it. A man on plan 
will always attract the resources of God. When you have a plan in place, you have every legitimate right to ask God for blessings. I'm telling you. He says he will only cause the plans you've made to succeed. He says commit the plans to him. He will cause it to prosper. That's the word. So time management can be effectively done when you have a plan in place. Planning is key. I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah 2, 9, 11. The thoughts I have for you. Even Psalms 139, verse 17. God still says the same thing. My thoughts for you are numerous. Yet he wants you to make your own plans when you submit to him. He looks within his blueprint for your creation and adjust things for you. A man who cannot plan will have difficulties in life. Planning is necessary, so you don't waste. You can only plan also when you have a vision. Like I already said, check the other video on vision. You will be amazed. The power of vision in causing you to succeed. You need a plan, child of God. Work on a plan. If you must succeed, be deliberate, be intentional, be specific. When you plan, trust me, distractions will not come. You know which company to keep, who to be with you, when they should be with you, how long they should be with you. You manage time effectively. You know where to go, the people to talk with, pay time. You manage credit. You even manage your relationships properly. You know whom not to be in any relationship with. You know they are going to disturb your plan. Planning is powerful. Success is good yet on purpose. If you don't plan, you don't commit no plan to God. God is not committed to bringing you good success. You need a plan. Even Joshua himself, before he had a good success, God had promised him to take over from Moses and take the people to the promised land. He had a plan in place. He would hear from God and he would march the army and follow as God directed. God wants to direct you. Can I conclude with this? The steps of a good man are ordered and directed by the Lord. That's Psalms 37 verse 23. It will take a plan for you to commit to the Lord. This is the word of the kingdom, friend. This is the good news. When you get this, it changes perspectives. Life begins to have more meaning. You are, you are disciplined. If you are getting this all the time equally, you will not be too itchy to get a prophetic word. This is your prophetic word. Organize your life. Be disciplined and you will prosper. Check the next teaching coming up about self-imposed discipline. I want to unveil to you some things that will put you on, on course and bless you. My name is Nchanji. Kenneth, Commonwealth Assembly of God Church. We are located in Bamenda, Alo Comprehensive High School. That's where we fellowship every 8.30 in the morning, every Sunday. We are committed to unveiling the kingdom of God to man. Apply the principle of planning, the wisdom of planning. You will have good success. God will direct you and bless you. I pray for you. May you succeed in all your plans. In Jesus' name, God bless you.